Leverage is not important. Actually, it's one of the least important factors when it comes to my trading in particular. Rather than having the same position size on any given trade, you should be solely focusing on the question, how much money will I lose if I get stopped out of this trade or close this trade where I am invalidated on this specific idea. To do this, I use a risk management calculator. I'll quickly show you how I use it with a link to duplicate it yourself in the description. Okay, so here it is. So this is basically your risk management calculator. I've just come up with like a few random figures here, but the only ones you're gonna be really focusing on, okay, are gonna be this risk dollar amount and this stop loss percentage. The stop loss percentage is gonna be how far away is your invalidation. If your invalidation on this specific trade from your current entries are like, you know, zero point, well, let's just do a random example, 1.4%. Okay, and your risk amount, for example, is $100, you know, that's 1%, for example, which I'll get into in a minute. Well, then your contract size will be $6,836. That's the contract position size you should be entering with. And again, this is a very rough estimate. I, you can't get it dead on, but you're going to be in and around that $100 rough range when you lose the trade, which is what you want to be focusing on. This is the position size you should be entering and you should be doing this on every single trade, okay? This template has also got a few other factors, okay? It's got start here, take a fee. I covered this all within my Twitter thing. I still got this is the same kind of thing. I've just duplicated it to show you the example but it's got our multiples and i've discussed within my twitter uh, for free just go and watch the video there i'll, I'll tag it or pin it somewhere um, but yeah it's very very useful um download links gonna be in the description to duplicate it but it's yeah, completely free but you should be doing this on every single one of your trades after learning that most crucial part of the trading risk management system we're now going to be moving on to the risk management grid type system i've made where people mainly fail within their trading career and how i'm going to try and help you get over that kind of hurdle and i think that's really important so let's get into it well, a lot of failing traders will vary their risk quit so quickly based upon their own judgment as to whether they are confident on a trade or not i don't think in the beginning you should be doing this uh, in the beginning you don't you have little experience you don't know yourself how good a trade may be how good a trade may not be you got emotions flowing at that stage which you don't know if we just go from the bottom to top here so you can see what losing traders end up doing is they have an inconsistent risk amount you know they won't be using the risk management calculator or whatnot they won't be doing that they'll be based you know their trades will be and the risk amount will be based upon non-data gathered ideas okay so it's just like you know hunches gut instinct whatever and the outcome of that is like a negative slash inconsistent outcome this is where most people start off and this is not the place you want to be starting off and i want to tell you where you should be starting off and it's this middle one here consistent risk amount Okay, so at the beginning, you want to be having a consistent risk amount based upon stats back data. I mean, this one can be replaced with this is the stage where you're going to be journaling all your data. You're going to be journaling everything, collecting data whilst you're having a consistent risk amount per trade. Again, what does that mean? Well, it means that on every single trade, you're going to be risking the same amount. So you can then figure out actually quite a bit easier which stats, which strategy is actually going to be the best for you to be using per setup, grading those strategies, which we're going to come into now. Uh, but this one is actually, it's very possible to have growth with this one, but in, you know, you're not maximizing the full potential of your trading, which is just something to note, which is still fine. This is a good way you should be starting, you know, start here. A lot of people will go from to this first, which is like, you know, they think they've got their ideas in, in place and they know which are the best ones, but they've got no data going over it. OK, and I'm going to show you in a minute how to go over the data as well. The varying risk amount. So this is where this is the best thing. I mean, it's, it's similar to this, right? These are actually very similar, but most people will start here and, and try, you know, and think that that is actually doing the green bit, but they've got no stats to back it. So the varying risk amount is the exact same almost as this, but the, the data is graded setups based upon long time data gathering. So basically you would coin market man, edge sheet, edge wonk, any kind of trading journal you want, trade stream. Um, I'm not affiliated with any of them, by the way. I use Coin Market Man at the moment and TradeStream, both relatively good. Choose which one you want to use. Grade your setups. You know, start collecting tags upon your setups. I'll go over a tag system as well in this video. Yeah, so tag your setups. You know, and go from that point onwards. Tag your setups in those in the journals, in the automated API ones. They're the best ones to really be going with. Uh, but once you've done that, you know, you can be starting to gather this data. And then what my point is from here is, okay, you've gathered your data. You can go, okay, well, you know, five minute SFPs, for example. Okay. What are they? Well, you know, you generally have like a really high win rate with them. Well, this can be classified as like an A setup or something, right? Well, therefore you want to be betting or risking more on SFPs or five minute SFPs than you would on any other setup. It makes sense. Most people will be like, yeah, they'd risk, you know, on this amount, they might be like, okay, I'm going to risk uh, five minute SFP, whatever. X amount and then the next trade is another five minutes of fee, they'll change it again randomly. And it's not very viable. Most traders start here. The real realistic way to start, in my opinion, is start here and then move your way slowly up to here after you've gathered the stats 
gathered which ones are the best ones and, and let's move on to the tag system okay so moving on to my tags template this is something i actually created more recently for myself this is in, in my own like personal little discord section you can do that for yourself to keep track of any intraday ideas whatever i've got a notion for this as well but i'll go over that another time yeah so the first thing you want to do is obviously within a few to api trading journals you've got a confidence level a confidence level is something i add on every trade you know one to five for yourself this is something in the beginning you want to be doing i do at least one to five well how confident are you in that trade before you take it and this is again keep in mind you're doing all of this whilst using consistent risk in this orange category you don't want to be doing all of this whilst having like inconsistent risk amount whatever all of this here to maximize the amount you're going to be like getting gaining from your stats gathering okay confidence level put that in let's just imagine four the stop loss price level what you know what stop loss if you're using a hard stop loss is your price level at is you know 20,444 something like that an individual price level very easy stop type is it a hard stop a soft stop you know hard stop loss being you've placed the stop loss in the book soft stop loss being you're monitoring the active movement and you're closing it manually don't recommend this for newer traders to begin with to be honest could put you in a hole volume spike again something very simple not simple but you know okay look at the last 20 candles on average at your level of interest how does that candle volume compared to the last 20 averages you know and that's something i'll dive into a lot deeper but let's say the example here is you know we've come into an sfp level the sfp occurs it hits 30 million volume the prior 20 candles average is like five six seven million well then that's yes a spike in volume because it's greatly above the average of the last 20 candles of, of data bullish bearish candle type yeah, there's something i note okay i'll go with this another day trap value area i'll go over this another day but essentially you want to be seeing uh, price close away from where the value area has occurred within that specific candle trap longs are short this is specifically focusing on open interest bullish bearish cvd change of structure sfp and time frame loss of value area high reclaim of value area low any other levels now the ones that are, are must-dos are this one, this one, this one. In my opinion, this one, liquidation. I don't remember covering that. I said liquidations, yeah. Um, I check all of them, to be honest. you know, This is just part of my personal structure and the way you can kind of structure it because on every given trade, you might don't want to miss out you know, uh, a certain tag or something. It's very good to have this. The other thing, if you're keeping a manual trading journal, is to put in the session. The trading journal I use is actually automatically tracks the session I'm trading in um, and the day. So like you know, you can be like 7 o'clock, london session okay and that journals it okay that that trade happened within that time of day and that goes into a little separate section so that's something you want to be checking consistently as well okay and and just keeping an eye on that i kind of wanted to touch upon that point i just made in regard to using these stats in the sense of you know calculating the days you're trading you know the time of day you're trading etc you want to be using this to your advantage you know if you find out for example that monday through thursday are your best trading days why are you going to be trading friday saturday sunday you know onwards it doesn't make sense you know you've got to find these edges and actually use them you know create discipline in yourself to enforce these these edges you you create and find you know i find out that for example 6 a.m to 12 p.m on, a, on on any certain day might be the best time for me to be trading so why am i going to be trading at other times more vigorously it doesn't make sense so obviously you know find this out and use this to your advantage don't just brush over it you know use this and obviously imply it into strategies etc and then that's where you can start varying your risk within you know the green box part of the the risk management grid section so i didn't mean to miss that out but apologies I should probably re-emphasize on the fact that leverage is not important that I made at the beginning of the video. Now, leverage, in my opinion, isn't important. It's just a metric you can use or tool that you can use to help achieve the position size you need for any given trade, okay? Because you're not going to have all your funds on one account, for example, okay? But as long as your liquidation amount, okay, isn't before or higher or within the, the parameters of you getting stopped out, as long as your liquidation is further away, I really couldn't care about the type of leverage that I'm using on that specific trade. As long as my liquidation uh, or my stop loss becomes before my my liquidation that's that's the best way to be really put it aside from that one thing i would also recommend you doing is actually using a tool called fancy zones of power toys something like that to just pin this to my screen so on my account if i just hit winners control t this now will always remain on my screen no matter what i do just to reinforce yourself to always be calculating your position size before you enter a trade i think that's really important to be doing and just a little mental psychological tip to always keep in front of your face and so that you're always actually willing to use it because it's just there in front of you now let's talk about daily risk. So daily risk is something that you want to have a point in the day in which you stop. You don't want to actually have a day where you lose X amount, like 20, 30% of your account. Have a day stop in place, you know, three, four, five percent. If you lose X amount, you end you stop trading for the day. Reinforce that discipline, create accountability for yourself. Let someone tell you, okay, or tell someone I'll stop trading if it hit four percent off the day. 
and end it there. Don't continuously go and go and go and lose so much on your account that you, it's, it's hard to recover that drawdown. You know, that drawdown's gonna be quite bad. So that's the, you don't wanna be doing that and make sure you just put a day stop in place. Also to discuss how you calculate, you know, how much you wanna be risking consistently. Remember, you don't wanna put yourself in a position where if you're not profitable yet, there's no point in yourself losing actual decent amount of some money just to be learning out. If you have, you know, I would say grab a $100 account, risk one to 3% of that, Put, you know, on average, you know, as a consistent variable, I'd say risk 1%, you know, risk $1, you know, if you start a $1,000 account, you know, risk, you know, $10, whatever, risk 1% on a consistent basis, you know, starting with this consistent risk amount. Okay, and then after you get to that size, you can start varying the risk amount. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we can do that. When I say varying risk amount, let's just dive into that a little bit. Because let's say you have a your best setups come once every three weeks, you know, once every two weeks, you're going to be risking more on that in the future. You know, in the beginning, you know, most people will start by risking out inconsistent amount, randomly guessing which is their best setup. But no, once you know that, this is the power of the exponential growth and how this eventually comes. Because once you know your best setups, you can start placing higher weight upon them, start risking more and hopefully reap the rewards of that. And that would then give you exponential growth. Okay whilst keeping your losers small. The other thing is also within this consistent risk amount and within these just whole type of notion, notations here that I would definitely recommend keeping a, a hard stop in place to begin with. Most people try soft stops and as a newer trader, your psychology just to be frank with you isn't built out for a soft soft stop to begin with. You will end up adding, 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 not knowing where to close. You know, it, it brings in, in uncontrollable variables due to the newer trader's psychology. So having a hard stop to begin with is definitely one I'd recommend, okay? To wrap it up, start with consistent sizing as i discussed in the previous like the grid set system use that use a risk management calculator that i went over that'll be linked in the description below for free just download it create your own discord for intraday logs again this is optional i prefer to do it it gives you a little, little place where you can quickly place your logs in journal and tag all your trades in your own system using your own template i showed you my template use something similar if you wish it's it, it, will help you journal your trades for a long period of time use a day stop okay use a day where you're going to stop trading during the day three four five percent start by using hard stops placing the stop in the books as i discussed i don't think the soft stop is primarily for newer traders to begin with it will basically essentially mess up your psychology your psychology isn't built for that <laughs> um create accountability so you remain disciplined to these rules you know send this to someone send your intraday trades someone i've got i, I consistent, consistently teach my students you know intraday everything sending them send me their results i send mine whatever we go over that stuff consistently um i'm not selling anything like that but just just to let you know create accountability for yourself it's definitely needed okay you need to do that on a consistent basis to basically remain disciplined to your rules okay so thank you all for listening follow me on twitter for intraday updates at luxury thank you